All right, seventh grade, welcome to a review two of three for this week. Today we're talking about fact versus opinion and fiction versus nonfiction. So once again, a reminder of how to do this review. Make sure you find that assignment called Study Guide in Google Classroom. Open up the Google Doc called Seventh Reading Study Guide. And then as we go, type in your answers to the Study Guide's questions. As we go, uh, keep your eyes open for this book icon. Information that's next to this icon is what's going to go in the study guide. So if you need a refresher, just go over to 7th grade reading. Let's see, this is 6th grade. 7th grade reading. Find that study guide assignment. You'll have a screen that looks something like this. And then go ahead and click 7th reading study guide. And you can type directly onto this. But if I type on this, it'll change it for you guys, I believe. So I've got my own copy opened up right here. We did um, text features and headings, and we did the big question yesterday. Today, we're starting right here. Okay, so let's get back into it. Fact versus opinion. We've talked about this already, of course, but a fact is a true statement. You can prove a fact. It's not something that you can, uh, you know, try to dispute or argue about, usually, because it's just true. An opinion, though, is a judgment or a belief. Hopefully it's based on fact, but it is something that you can argue about or uh, sort of debate. So if um, you're reading a text, one thing that you've got to keep your eyes open for is the fact that some authors will try to say, my opinion is a fact, when in, in, the tr in truth, they cannot prove their opinion. Uh, so make sure that when someone is when you're reading something someone has written, if they say something and they pass it off as being absolutely true and provable, make sure you notice to see whether it really is a fact or if it's an opinion. But I'd like you to write these definitions in your review guide right now. All right, which statement below is an opinion? Is it the beach is the best place to go for a vacation? The sand on beaches is created through erosion, or the moon causes tides in the ocean. Which one of these is an opinion? Which one is not provable? Go ahead and write your answer on the study guide. And on the study guide, what you can do is, if it's easiest, you can choose whichever one you want. I'm going to highlight all of them because I don't want to give you a hint. And you can uh, make the one that you think is the opinion bold, just like by doing that. Or you can just type down here, I think the opinion is letter whatever. Okay. So once you've chosen that, we can move on. All right, fiction versus nonfiction. Fiction is writing about imaginary people, places, and or events. Now, sometimes when you are reading fiction, it might include a few re real people, a few real places, or a few real events. This is usually called historical fiction. But if there is any hint of something that is imaginary, made up by the author, then it counts as fiction. If everything in the story is true, though, that is nonfiction. Nonfiction literally means not fiction. It's the opposite of fiction. So nonfiction is writing about real people, places, and events. In your review, what I'd like you to do is, in your own words, explain what the main difference between these two is. That's what's going to come up on our quiz. Okay. Narrative writing is any writing that tells us some type of story, and fiction and nonfiction can both use narrative writing. But before we talk about that a little bit more, go ahead and write down this definition in your review guide. Narrative writing is any writing that tells some type of story. Obviously, fiction writing is going to tell a story. Uh, Harry Potter is about a story of a boy who discovers he is a wizard and then has to, you know, deal with that. Nonfiction can be a story, too. If you've ever uh, read a news article or heard a friend tell you about something crazy that happened over the weekend, that's nonfiction, and that's a narrative writing. That's sto a story, uh, but it's just something that truly did happen. Let's talk about the differences and then the similarities between a fiction story and a nonfiction story. So we've got uh, in a made-up fiction story over here. It has imagined people, events, and or places. 
there might be a little bit of real stuff in there, but a lot of it is made up by the author. Our nonfiction story is has real people, real events, and real places. Everything in the nonfiction story is true and real. Now, how do they uh, overlap? What is similar about them? Well, since they're both stories, they both use narrative writing. So they have a narrator. They have characters. They have dialogue, which means people are talking to each other. They've got story events. Another word for that would be plot. And they've got a theme slash a central idea. So these are all elements that are uh, involved in narrative writing. No matter if your story is fictional, made up, or non-fictional, real, it's going to include these five things. So go ahead and write these five things in your review or study guide. All right, I believe that's all we've got for today. These reviews are going to be pretty short, so um, if you have any questions about anything we talked about, feel free to, of course, you can watch the video again to give yourself sort of a refresher, or email me or message me and I can help you understand anything that's confusing. All right, thanks for joining me today, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.